What's up, Cyberspace? Welcome to Zero Style. I'm your host, Zero, the Cyberspace Hero. If you're into EDC gear, knives, flashlights, fidget toys, morale patches, this other pocket junk, this is a channel for you. So, I am going to show you what I've got in my pockets this week, starting with the Hank. This is from MCMD Hankery. I call this Nest of the Face Hugger. This is a custom made Hank, sort of theme from the Aliens movie. It's got green, super, super soft micro suede on the back with yellow and green embroidery on either side. In my EDC trunk, I actually use this as my omen stand. All of my omens lay right on top of this. This Hank doesn't get a lot of pocket time. And that's what I want to say about this episode. Nothing is sponsored. Everything here is things that I have bought and uh, I really like and enjoy. So I'm going to say that this week it's a thematic Tones of the Earth episode. The pouch this week, it's the Zero Feud Soft Wallet Mini Pouch in the Woodland Camo Cordura. Cordura is a really, really strong fabric, and you can t see that it's patinaed a little bit because I carry this pouch a lot. This week, I've definitely got some earth tone patches for you. Let's start with the green team, Pete's Pirate Life in the OD green. On the opposite end of the spectrum, we've got Justin Coke's Coke can, the spray paint can that is in brown, and then two sweet camo patches. This is the new camo jaw patch. Man, David on the DL brand, your factory did an amazing job swirling that camo into this patch. Super cool PVC patch. And then this one. This is a collab from Coqui Creations and Dan Skins. This is actually a harder patch. You can see it's like a micarta patch. I actually think it's hardened Cordura. It's got a little bit of flex to it because, you know, the little pokey things here don't feel great in your pocket on Gundam RX 78 2, the OG mobile suit. But yeah, I dig this patch. It's very cool and it's super thematic and goes great with this. But I will admit I don't rock this patch a lot. This is just a part of my collection that looks great. All right, so let's take a peek at what we got in the pouch this week. Right off the bat, right in the front, as you'd expect, we've got a JRW Gear Curator Flex. Not in green though, we got a tan Coyote Brown Curator Flex. These are just some of my favorite worry coins, stress ball, fidget toy type things. It's hard to explain. It's, it's Jamie from JRW Gear's curator design, which is this neat pyramid in a circle, a little bit bigger than a normal size coin with his logo on the back. The metal ones have all kinds of sweet graphics on the backside, lasered or etched. He's done all kinds of collabs with other makers for sweet designs. But the curator flexes in particular are made out of PVC plastic. They're not made out of brass or titanium or zirconium or any of the other metal ones but the PVC plastic version can sort of give it a stress ball feel to it and I really dig it it adds a whole new layer to what I assume the metal curators are like because I don't have a knife this week you haven't seen in quite a while if you've been watching my channel for a minute this is Jean the wasp queen this is my coke tools wasp Jean is a friction folder that is made out of AEB-L steel, hand ground by Justin Koch, and Jade G10 material that has a sweet digicam appearance to, to it. Got the speed holes as Justin uh, has cut here on this. Great little tiny knife. I really dig this knife. On the back side here, we've got a 3D printed collab bead from Plague and Justin. I think those dudes are friends. They have all kinds of collabs together. But this is the new Cyclops scowl with a Coke can on the bottom to make a cool little hidden bead design. Because you totally can tie that knot and a little thin and then stuff it in there. You kind of pull it to the side like this. Pull your slack out of the one side like this. And when you make your knot on the back end, do it as absolutely tight with it, with it as you can. And then once you're done with that, pull your slack out the regular way and pop the bead into the recessed area. And there you go. Now, as I said, this is a friction folder, which means that there is no locking mechanism on this knife. There's just a little stop pin right here on the back. And this arm that you use to deploy it hits back against the edge there. And that's it. When you close the knife, it's the same story on the back side. Can't go past the stops that it has there. 
generally speaking, friction folders are nice because they're legal pretty much anywhere a lot. Knives are illegal. If you live in a place where you can't have a lock on your knife, a friction folder is great. If you live in a place where a knife has to be under a certain size, Justin's knives are perfect for that. They definitely fall under the three inch rule of Ohio. But yeah, Coke Tools Wasp. I really dig the shape on the grind on this. Really, really dig Justin's grinds. The shape is super cool, and this is just a really slicey belly on the backside of this knife right here. Next in the pouch, from Breakfast Club EDC. This is the green egg from Breakfast Club EDC. It is literally a coin that is in the shape of an egg with the Breakfast Club motto on the backhand side. You could use this as a challenge coin. You could use this as a worry coin. You could use this as a fidget coin. You could use this as a magic coin if you're that kind of guy. But yeah, it's just cool to have a coin like this in your pouch. Brody over at Breakfast Club EDC runs this Facebook group for these egg coins. Does all kinds of giveaways and cool collabs in the group. It's just, he seems like a really good guy and uh, has a little side business with these eggs and gives a lot of people happiness and joy collecting these and doing fun stuff with them. So uh, check out the Breakfast Club on Facebook, the link down in the description below. Up next, real quick, we've got this cool sticker from Inkpot Artworks. This is his jaw, as you saw on the Camo Ranger eye patch here. But yeah, this is like paper, like a paper bag you'd get at a grocery store kind of material. Just a really cool sticker that came with the patches. I wanted to feature it. Super neat, fits with the theme. Digging deeper into the pouch. Way down here, we've got the OD Green Special Edition Olite i3T EOS flashlight. And you will notice mine is battle scarred right here. I really dig the double reverse sided deep carry clip on this flashlight. It gives you the, a lot of different abilities to clip this onto different things, whether it be like a hat or in your pocket on the inside or the outside or a bag, and you can kind of get it to go any direction that you want. This flashlight is a tail switch deploy flashlight, which means you give it one click on the tail, turn it on, one click again to turn it off. If you click it in succession, it changes brightnesses. It's still kind of daytime, so we can't really test the brightness. I think that these are rated at like 80 to 100 lumens, so pretty decent output for a flashlight like this. The i3 T EOS is the AAA version of this flashlight, so I definitely suggest that you grab yourself some rechargeable AAA batteries. Link down in the description for below for some AAA batteries that I like that are rechargeable. Jack, yeah, the green special edition i3T EOS from Olight. Um, I don't carry this a lot for a couple reasons. This is a nice flashlight. I really dig this like knurling pattern on it. I mentioned I dig the clip. The clip comes off completely too if you wanted to like do it a different way or put a different clip on there. The reason I don't carry this light a lot is that I'm not a huge tail switch deployment when it comes to a flashlight fan. It's just not my preferred method. I think that the on the side is just more ergonomic with the way I hold a flashlight personally. I do really love the clip and the finish is cool. It looks good, right? Like green is my favorite color. So to have a green metallic flashlight, you'd think I'd want to put this in all kinds of photos on Instagram or whatever. I mean, I do definitely. But I was pretty disappointed how fast the finish was scratched off by this guy just riding dirty in a pouch, banging around with some of my other gear, like all of my other gear does. So yeah, just gotta say, that was my thoughts on the finish on this flashlight. Hopefully they're better. There's a new zombie edition Olight that just came out that looks super sweet. I'm really tempted to buy it. But I also am not super into like this form factor of rechargeable batteries anymore. I'd rather have a C or a micro or mini USB plug on the side and charge it that way. It's just easier than in the box. For me, personally, with the way I roll. And finally, deep in the bowels of the pouch lives my big eye design mini pen in brass. This is just a small little pocket pouch friendly pen. It has a little micro cord lanyard with a titanium bead that comes on the back. 
And these are just a nice one-handed deployable pen. You just kind of give it a back turn spin there and the pen comes right out. There's a lot of times in life when you need a pen and you need to have your own pen in these gross, dis disgusting times when you actually have to sign something. Uh, I just grab this pen out of my pouch when I walk into like a restaurant where I'm getting takeout from or whatever. Quick one-handed deployment, sign the receipt or whatever because I almost never have cash and then dip out. The Big Eye Design Mini Pen in brass. The last thing deep in the bottom of my pouch because it gets used the least. It's good to have but you don't need it every moment in my life anyhow. So got this slap here which I'm going to be slapping somewhere soon. Take our egg coin back side. Our Olight rests all the way across the bottom there. So just lay the bead on the side of the knife like that so it has whatever space that it needs to and finally maybe the most important thing in the whole pouch the thing that gets used the most the worry coin the pocket junk the pocket trash not only do i use this thing as a fidget toy as a stress reliever also is the best barrier in this pouch so if i take the flex out and close this up let me hold the zipper away so you can hear that. But listen. You hear that stuff moving around? I'd be worried that this knife would be scratching the finish on that flashlight. More. So yeah, just take that Curator Flex and set it right on top of everything else. It's malleable, so like you can push it down and squeeze it, whatever it needs to be, into that pouch so it gets the perfect form. Now if we do the same shake test again... Nothing but zip. We are good to go. And okay, yes, with and without, it does add a difference to the thickness of this pouch. But no worse than the Ranger Eye patches themselves do, so I definitely think it's worth it in the end. So that's what's in the pouch this week. The fit. Also in the pocket, I've got this. This is my Andar Finn wallet. This is just really, at its core, a couple pieces of elastic looped around a square of leather. The leather here on the front holds my lucky $2 bill. People ask me all the time, Zero, how are you so lucky? Why do you have the magic power of luck? Well, there's your answer right there. Just go to your local bank and ask for a $2 bill. Stuff that thing in your wallet. This is cool. I love the way that you kind of squeeze it, and there's a hole that goes all the way through to the other side. If you need to carry some cash or whatever, you can put it in there. You can also put cash here in the back, but it makes it really easy for you to just sort of go like this to get to that most used card on the inside, which I've put a nondescript card in there for this video. But yeah, it's cool because you can grab the card here out of the front. The way I roll, I have my two most used cards here in the front and then the third one here in the back section with the other ones. Normally I have a fob in the back as well too for the door at work because I've got to have it if I'm going to go in some doors. And finally, because why not, this is my vlog, we're going to feature the original 1992 Game Boy. The same one that I've been rocking for all these years. This is the Mean Green Machine. It's a plastic case. I'm going to throw Metroid in there. If you've never seen a Game Boy before, the idea is this cartridge goes here on the back that holds the ROM and the mapper data that has everything that you need. This bad boy runs on four AA batteries, and it does not come with a backlit screen. But mine, on the other hand, does. I've done an orange backlit LED mod to this Game Boy. We can kind of see it on this camera, I hope. Adjust the contrast. Jay, you ever play Metroid for Game Boy? This is like literally the best Metroid for Game Boy. Because it is literally the only Metroid for Game Boy. Uh, is Metroid 2 good? Yes! Is it different than every other Metroid game? Yes. Is every other Metroid game unique in its own way? No, but almost all of them are. They definitely did something super innovative and creative for the original Game Boy when they made Metroid 2 The Return of Samus, and it is worthy of a feature here in this pouch dump video. Even though it's not in my pouch, it's something that would be in my bag with me because 
I love retro games. I don't know if you know this about me, I have a Nintendo, a Super Nintendo, a Sega Genesis, a Sega CD, Dreamcast, Atari Jaguar, Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Pocket, I have a Sega Game Gear, a Virtual Boy, uh, a European Super Nintendo, a Wii, a PlayStation 3, um, and obviously the Switch. Yeah, so I love video games, very much so, and I'm obviously a big time Nintendo fanboy, but when it comes to retro gaming, the Super Nintendo is my all time favorite console. But the OG Game Boy really has a strong place in my heart, along with the Game Boy Advance. There's just so many good games. I used to play these games on my backlit Game Boy Advance when the SP came out, but this green definitely matches with the theme that we got going on this week, so I thought I'd feature it. I forgot to mention, I've also done a pro sound mod to this that you could do line level output and bypass the hiss of the headphone jack when you're recording. I've actually got uh, a few different copies of Nano Loop and LSDJ in here, which are actually software for making beats and music on the Game Boy. Another lifetime ago, for some reason, I thought that I could make and compose music on the Game Boy. Cause it's like a grill hanger or whatever, but man, it is hot out here. Global what? Anyhow, uh, that's the Pouch Dump episode for this week. I hope you enjoyed it. I try and drop one of these videos weekly on a Friday, so if you dug it, give me a like and click my face down here and subscribe if you want to see more of this content. I am less than 50 subs away from a thousand! I like can't believe it. I appreciate each and every one of you who have subbed to my channel, and if no one has told you today, you are a wonderful person who deserves love and praise just like everybody else in this world. Get out there and do something nice. Have some fun, and I'll see you in the next one. Later.